and you believe that you're ready for an executive coach to help you meet all of your career goals, if you want to stay motivated and accountable, if you want somebody to encourage you to push past your limiting beliefs, well, the doors are open for my executive coaching program, looking for a place to shine from underestimated to executive. They'll be open until 31 August, at which time they'll close until a future date when I launch a new cohort. I've created a powerful step-by-step process to guide you to greater clarity about your dream position. This is the what you want and why. You'll get laser focused on exactly what your dream is. You'll learn how to knock down all the barriers in your path and you'll create a clear, customized roadmap for your success. The magic will really happen when I show you the key to execute your plan in a way that makes your success inevitable. This program includes 27 video lessons and accompanying worksheets, plus seven live coaching sessions each week. You'll use the process you learn over these seven weeks again and again as you evolve and rise in your career. And even better, you will have lifetime access to the lessons and worksheets, including any improvements that I make in preparation for future cohorts. The first 10 clients who enroll this week will receive a special productivity box worth $169, and you will also receive access to a private podcast with all 27 lessons in audio form to make it as easy as possible for you to learn the new concepts. I can't wait to work together with you toward making your biggest career dreams into your everyday reality. I'll see you there. Are you tired of feeling overlooked and underestimated? Hi, I'm Tammy North the introverted executives coach. If you're an introverted executive or you're ready to rise to senior leadership, but you're struggling to be seen as a high potential, this podcast is for you. When was the last time you made a decision to invest in yourself? I mean, really invest in yourself. Well, today I want to talk to you about what I mean when I ask you that question and some of the ways that you might consider making larger investments in yourself, investments that will propel you toward your biggest goals. I'll also give you some criteria to measure if the investment you are considering making in yourself is worth your time and or your money. One of the main keys to success that I've noticed across the numerous successful leaders that I have the opportunity to work with every day, and of course, other very successful people generally in the world, is that they are willing to invest in themselves. They are willing to spend money or time to gain additional knowledge, either leadership knowledge or technical knowledge or some other skills, or they're willing to invest in order to gain more self-awareness. They're willing to spend time in the discomfort zone in order to build relationships and ultimately to build powerful coalitions so they can work to solve challenging problems or to make a really incredible impact in the world. And depending on your desired career goals and your industry, this will look completely different from other people. But remember, I'm here to help you rise in the way that will allow your superpowers to shine. It doesn't matter what industry or career field. That's my goal is to help you succeed and grow exactly in the way that you want to. I remember back to when my journey of continuous growth and learning started. There was a day, I talk about it often, probably if I ever write a book, it will probably be the opening to my book. But there was a day when I was a single mom and my daughter was about two or three years old and I had just spent the last bit of money that we had on groceries. They were in the refrigerator and I went to take a quick shower and while I was in the shower, you know, maybe seven minutes, I came out and my daughter had pulled many things out of the refrigerator and onto the kitchen floor. And there's a whole detail that goes with that story that I like to tell, but just suffice it to say that I sat down and cried because I didn't know how we were going to get to the next payday and most of our food was now ruined. Well, that was the day that I decided I was going to change. That was the day that I decided we couldn't stay where we were anymore. That for my daughter's sake and for my own sake, I needed to go on a path to do things differently and I needed to make a deliberate path forward. Well, since that day, I did things such as get a bachelor's degree, I was commissioned as a naval officer, and then I received a a graduate degree. I've had lots and lots of mentors, so much feedback from them, guidance, um, opportunities that they gave me and that I embraced, uh, their feedback that I incorporated and all of that. And then I read so many books. I think I've read, I don't even know, probably
probably 300 books since that time or more. And I try very hard when I read a book, you'll know on some of these podcasts, for example, that when I read a book, I then take some portions of that and try to incorporate it into my own life. And then I turn it around and share it with you as well so that you can learn what I've been learning. These are books on productivity, mindset, goals, different concepts that I'm interested in learning, just generally speaking, technical knowledge. It might also be things to help me in my own industry to better understand either historically where my industry has been or something that I believe would help me understand where my industry is going. I've used tools such as mind maps to allow myself to dream and brainstorm and come up with bigger ideas constantly. I've had multiple experiences in my life, such as going through years of a period of my life where I ran all the half marathons and marathons in San Diego. I've had experiences such as going to technical schools in addition to my college degrees or getting other certifications such as agile certifications or coaching certifications. I had a period of time I became a person who did long range precision rifle competitions and that was a fun time where I learned so much and it was very, that was actually very technical, exquisite knowledge. And then I learned just the power of execution and actually making things happen. This was really my project management period and I now believe almost everything is a project, but some people call themselves project managers and they get a PMP certification, yet they don't actually execute their plans. And I don't think that's you, I'm sure, but I'm sure you all know those people that call themselves a project manager. They probably even have a project management title, yet they make very slow progress. Once I realized the power of execution, I can't get it out of my mind. And now every project, including whether it's home or work or across my entire teams at work, that now I have a deep understanding of the power of execution, which helps me throughout my entire life. And then I've had so many executive coaches at this point. I've probably had 13 years of executive coaches to this point where I've had executive project management coaches. I've had executive coaches that were given to me by work in order for me to improve in some way. I have hired my own one-on-one executive coaches. I literally have handed my own money that wasn't reimbursed in any fashion over to people who have been my executive coach. And then all of that actually inspired me that to become an executive coach. So I pursued an executive coaching certification that was over one year of very deep executive coaching education and understanding. And then now to this day, I also invest in business coaches in order to help me stand up my own executive coaching business that you now see here. So that all of this didn't happen overnight. This was years and years and years of work that I've done, but it was a constant learning and a constant growth mindset that I always had, which has allowed me to succeed across multiple large organizations and even to this day where I have now a successful executive coaching business as well. So why is it a problem if you decide, no, I've learned everything I need to know and you just stop learning? Well, if you're listening to this podcast, it seems to me like you are a person who is interested in growing in your in your career. So it doesn't seem like you would be a person who's stopped learning. There might be some ways you haven't considered in which maybe there's opportunity for more growth. One is if you feel like you have reached some kind of career stagnation, you know, without continuous growth and investment, you do risk being overtaken by your peers or by younger professionals who are just more in touch with recent developments in your industry. You might have a decreased value proposition because you are an aspiring executive. You are somebody who is aiming for more senior leadership. Then others look to you and you're expected to bring a unique blend of your experience and skills, but you also need to bring innovative thinking to the table. And without self-investment, this type of value will actually diminish. And you might have missed opportunities by not being at the forefront of various uh, changes in your industry or different, and you know, one one good thing to learn is what's happening in other industries, because you might be able to bring it to your industry, that you miss out on leading pioneering projects. You might miss out on the opportunity to lead a pioneering project or to head a big team. You know, often the more senior leadership will look for somebody who really has that forward leaning kind of brain. 
And you might not be able to influence a pivotal decision when it comes down to it. And then there's always reduced job satisfaction. This kind of stagnation will lead you to feel inadequate. You'll start to think, oh, all these young people know more. You might start to feel demotivated or like maybe your time has passed, like you've gone past a time horizon and there's no chance that you could be the person to succeed anymore. That if it was supposed to be you, it would have happened three years ago. Well, all of this can spiral into reducing reduced job performance where you just kind of end up like, meh, whatever. And that is not a place to be if you still do have any desire at all to reach a more senior place in your organization. And then within the business world, and especially at the executive level, it's a very dynamic experience. So you want to maintain your market relevance. If you are outdated or out of touch with you know, just different movements or initiatives across your organization, you will not be as effective or relevant when it comes to a strategic role. And then when you are interviewing or being considered for more strategic roles, if you are able to communicate or execute at that level, it will be noticed. If you're focused on rising to senior leadership in a large organization, or even if you just want to become the CEO of your own business, the realization that you've reached a point of stagnation or that you haven't invested in new learning, including tools that would increase your own self-awareness might be subtle, but it will be obvious. So let's delve deeper into how you might discover that you have a problem and why it might be time to take some shifts in your thinking. One is if you feel like your performance has been plateauing, unlike you know earlier phases in your career, you where you experienced rapid progression and you were getting multiple promotions just because you were motivated or you had a strong work ethic or um you you had some great attitude, often some of that will just especially when you're young, you'll just bounce right up the ladder to a certain point. But then you'll get to a phase where you're kind of seems like you are, this is where you're going to, you eventually you'll get to a place where it sort of seems like maybe this is where you're going to be from now on, sort of a status quo situation. And then you think, well, you haven't acquired any new skills in a while. You haven't expanded your network or you haven't achieved any significant milestones in a while. And if you start thinking about that, uh, then that might be the reason that you're kind of plateaued. You might get some feedback from your peers or your supervisors where, you know, kind of colleagues, maybe in a conference room or something, just make an off handed remark, well, Bob, you know, you've been in this position for a while now, or you always approach problems the same way. You know, you just start hearing things like that. And um, that that's a sign that people are starting to have the opinion that you're kind of stuck in a rut and that you're kind of old school. Maybe um, their people are now looking to a different direction and leaving you in the rear view. Maybe in a performance review, your supervisor will also highlight that you need more diversified skill sets and they will encourage you to learn some new things, or maybe you need to improve your leadership qualities. Oftentimes people get to a certain level and they think, oh, I'm a good leader, which I'm sure we're all good leaders to some extent, but there is always room to improve. Trust me, I've been at this for a very long time. And even in the last one year, I have learned some new leadership skills that are helping me to expand even further. You might start comparing yourself with your peers and you might notice that some of them are moving on to higher roles or getting selected for higher profile projects while you end up still on the sidelines. Or you might see some of your other peers getting invited to speak at industry events and nobody ever asks you to speak at anything. I mean, that's an an example. Maybe you're a person who isn't interested in speaking, but you will start noticing people who get attention. And if if you feel like you're being overlooked, this could be one of the reasons. And if you feel like maybe you haven't been challenged in a while, one clear sign is when you no longer feel like there's any challenge at all. You feel like you could do your current role standing on your head. It's just routine. There's no new learning curves. This should be a big hint that it's time to consider growing in some fashion. Maybe you've had some decreased engagement or enthusiasm. If you no longer feel excitement or or the passion that you once did for your current job or your industry overall, this could come from not feeling aligned with your current industry trends or advancements. Maybe you feel like the world is kind of moving on and you're still here. And when that happens, maybe you get kind of overwhelmed. You can't quite grasp what they're talking about over there. That concept, maybe artificial intelligence or something like that, where you don't quite grasp it. So you start to feel like you're being left behind, which makes you feel out of touch. And then you sort of just want to fade away. Well, if you realize that you become stagnant, it is critical to take intentional and proactive steps to course correct yourself and reinvigorate your own professional journey. And there are several strategies that I'll talk with you about right now in this episode that you can employ, that you can, that you can embrace to invest in your own future growth. 
One is you can decide that you're going to get executive education, something like an MBA program or even some short courses that are kind of like MBA certifications or other things. You know, many top tier universities offer executive MBA programs or specialized courses that are tailored for professionals in the industry that you're in. Uh, there's also all these online learning platforms like Coursera, LinkedIn Learning, or Udemy. Some of those that just offer all kinds of topics that you can learn on. And some of them are just one hour topics. Some of them offer uh, maybe a series of 10 different lessons. Some of them have books that you want to read, but you don't feel like you have the time. They'll have a little summary of books. One thing you can do is you can hire an executive coach. As I said, I've done that multiple times. Either it was they were provided for me by my company or I did hire my own executive coaches as well. And just engaging with an executive coach, there's so much that is good about that. But one of the best things about an executive coach is that they'll be there to show you a mirror. That's their whole purpose is when you come and you engage and you'll say, here's what I'm working on. An executive coach will help you bring that fresh perspective or just that complete self-awareness that's hard to get on your own. They'll be completely objective. They don't care you know, what you've done wrong or what you've done right. It's all just, let's take a look at where you are, where you want to go. And then your executive coach can help you see things that you don't see yourself and ways that you might be blocking yourself in ways that you might be completely amazing that you haven't even noticed. So an executive coach is one of those things that just supercharges your path. There is no doubt about that. And then you could also get a, a new mentor. Maybe you have some mentors, but maybe they aren't really kind of challenging you, or maybe the relationship has kind of been fading. Get a new fresh mentor and talk to somebody, you know, it's kind of in a place you want to be. The sooner you do that, the better. You can always attend conferences and workshops, you know, just to keep yourself up on the latest industry trends and to do a little bit of networking with peers. You can join professional associations. They often provide, you know, seminars, webinars, working networking events. You can join a mastermind, you know, where you get to meet with other people who are trying to succeed in the way that you are or who are trying to solve problems that you want to solve. These opportunities can be very enlightening because when you're with some other like-minded people who are all trying to succeed, they will bring expertise and things that they're doing the ways that this is the way they're executing their plan. This is the way that they manage their calendar. This is the way they do this or that. It'll be very enlightening. And definitely setting clear goals is key to this whole situation. When's the last time you actually made a goal? Ask yourself that. Something that you actually wrote down and that you've act actively been working on every single week. Some that you make some progress toward that goal. If you kind of feel like you've been stagnant, you can talk to your supervisor and see if there's some sort of a stretch assignment that they'll give you. Something that's outside your comfort zone, but something that you can work on to broaden your skills or your, your generally your horizons. And like I said, I've read hundreds of books or I've listened to hundreds of books, audible.com. That's, that's an awesome place to just listen to books while I'm, I drive a lot every day. So that's a great place to just get education. And I, I very rarely waste time. If I'm doing something and it's, and I can listen to information, I'm almost always listening to a book or a podcast and just soaking in information. I'm just a voracious consumer of information. And you can always ask for feedback from your peers or other people around you or somebody who you respect, you know, just to get some, what do they think? Do you have blind spots? Are there, is there there's something that you don't even know you're doing? How about the way you lead a meeting? Is there something that you could improve upon there? What are some, if you can get some feedback from some peers or subordinates or superiors, you know, kind of like that whole 360 look, if you're willing to ask and people are willing to tell you, you, know, you might want to be careful who you ask. Some people are, are not going to provide the feedback in a very useful way, but find the people who you respect and see if they'll give you some feedback. That's always good. And then of course, any other skills you can learn and or invest in, such as any personal development, like emotional intelligence, stress management, mindfulness, all of these will have significant payoffs in leadership roles. In fact, you, I actually very highly encourage you. I highly encourage you to learn a little bit about coaching skills, about how to coach yourself. And then also, I just really believe that being a coach coach and understanding how a coach, some of the, some of the best practices for coaching skills will help you actually be a better leader. So, you know me, I have an activity for you today. Today, we're going to build a growth map. This growth map is to, I'm going to have you use this to assess where you are right now. What's your current professional standing? And then we're going to use that to identify areas that you want to grow, and then you can set actionable steps in place to achieve where you want to go in the future. So one thing you're going to need is like a big piece of paper or maybe a digital mind mapping tool, get some colored markers and pins or, you know, sticky notes or some way that you can do some digital note taking. So 
first, you're going to make your current state. So write down right now where you are right now. What is your current role? What skills do you have? What have you achieved in your life? What are your strengths? And kind of what do you think your challenges or barriers are? Write that in the middle of the paper. And then your future state on the other side, write down where you wish you would be. What is your dream? If you know What role or position do you wish you could aspire to? What skills or achievements do you want to acquire? So between your current state and your future state, kind of make a bridge between those two. And then write down in between where that bridge is, all the things you can think of that you might need to do in order to get from where you are now to where you want to be. And then once you've identified all the gaps you can think of, then prioritize those those things based on how likely it is that you'll be able to do them, like feasibility, how big of an impact it would have if you did it. And then is there something that's more important than others? Like maybe there's a time horizon. If you don't do it now, you wouldn't be able to do it again for a year. Maybe you sh- that's an, something you should do more urgently, like get that out of the way. And then based on that, come up with some goals, some smart goals, you know, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound. Like one, one idea could be to read one book a month for the next 12 months and to take notes and to implement at least one concept every month from every book you read. If you just did that alone, you would be a completely um, different person one year from now. Just remember, growth is not linear and you will have some setbacks and that's okay. The objective of this activity is not just to achieve goals, but it's really to get a continuous growth mindset built inside of your brain. And by regularly revisiting and updating your growth map, you'll not only see the you know that tangible progress, you'll also feel more aligned with the professional journey that you're on. You'll actually feel like you're making progress. Go ahead, do this growth map. It is a straightforward activity and you can start it today and making a plan like this will actually keep you motivated to make progress all the time. So as we wrap up today's episode, I want to leave you with a thought. Success, especially at the executive level, is not about reaching a destination, but it's embarking on a continuous journey of growth. The modern world is dynamic and to thrive in it requires self-awareness, proactivity, and an underlying commitment to personal and professional evolution. Whether you're just starting out or you're deep into your executive career, remember that the investment that you make in yourself today will lay the foundation for the opportunities of tomorrow. So if today's discussion resonated with you and you believe that you're ready for an executive coach to help you meet all of your career goals, if you want to stay motivated and accountable, if you want somebody to encourage you to push past your limiting beliefs, well, the doors are open for my executive coaching program, looking for a place to shine from underestimated to executive. They'll be open until 31 August, at which time they'll close until a future date when I launch a new cohort. I've created a powerful step-by-step process to guide you to greater clarity about your dream position. This is the what you want and why. You'll get laser focused on exactly what your dream is. You'll learn how to knock down all the barriers in your path and you'll create a clear, customized roadmap for your success. The magic will really happen when I show you the key to execute your plan in a way that makes your success inevitable. This program includes 27 video lessons and accompanying worksheets, plus seven live coaching sessions each week. You'll use the process you learn over these seven weeks again and again as you evolve and rise in your career. And even better, you will have lifetime access to the lessons and worksheets, including any improvements that I make in preparation for future cohorts. The first 10 clients who enroll this week will receive a special productivity box worth $169. And you will also receive access to a private podcast with all 27 lessons in audio form to make it as easy as possible for you to learn the new concepts. I can't wait to work together with you toward making your biggest career dreams into your everyday reality. I'll see you there. You can connect with me at Introverted Executive on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. If you're ready for executive coaching to help you achieve your biggest career goals, subscribe to my weekly Rise and Shine newsletter. There, you'll find out when my program opens for new clients, and you'll also receive weekly tips and activities to continue to make a bigger impact in your own powerful way. You'll find all the information and links down in the show notes. See you next week.